Today we're going to find the sum of a series that I found on the Math Stack Exchange, and I believe this series is originally attributed to Ramanujan. And so, well, what is it? It's the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2n plus 1 over e to the 2n plus 1 times pi plus 1. And, well, notice that there's lots of irrational, even transcendental numbers wrapped up in this sum, and what the actual value is I think is kind of surprising. So let's observe that the first few terms look like this. We have 1 over e to the pi plus 1 plus 3 over e to the 3 pi plus 1 and so on and so forth. That just gives you a feel for what's going on here. Now we're going to use three tools in order to make our calculation a little bit shorter. The first two of which that I'll derive and the third one is pretty similar to something I've done in a previous video. Okay, so let's start with this first one. So notice that we have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2n plus 1 times x to the 2n plus 1. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start with that left hand side. So here we've got the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of, like I said, 2n plus 1 times x to the 2n plus 1. So we've got something like that. Notice that that's simply the odd terms of maybe what would be a more general, nicer, big series. So observe that I could write this as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n times x to the n. That would be like all of the terms and then subtract off the even terms. So that would be the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of let's see, 2n times x to the 2n. So something like that. Okay, well, keeping that in mind, let's see if we can simplify this at all. And as we'll see, it will, won't be too bad. So I'd like to observe that it looks like a derivative has occurred on this first one. And perhaps it'll be a little bit clearer if I factor an x out and I'm left with the sum as n goes from, let's see, 0 up to infinity of n times x to the n minus 1. Now, does it look like a derivative happened on the second one as well? Well, I think it does. So it looks like if we factor an x out here, we have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2n times x to the 2n minus 1. Well, like I said, it looked like a derivative occurred here. And what I mean by that is this n times x to the n minus 1 looks like the derivative with respect to x of x to the n. And then this 2n times x to the 2n minus 1 looks like the derivative with respect to x of x to the 2n. So that motivates me to write this as x times the derivative with respect to x, and I'm actually going to factor the derivative out of both of these sums and the x out of both of these sums, and then the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of simply x to the n, so that would be this first term, and then minus the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of x to the 2n, but I'm going to write that as x squared to the n. But now that should hopefully be kind of familiar. This thing is really a classic geometric series that hasn't been manipulated at all. But then this next one is like a geometric series where we've replaced the common ratio with x squared. Okay, so let's see. This is gonna give us x, and then we have the derivative with respect to x of one over one minus x minus one over one minus x squared. Again, that's just from the standard sum of a geometric series rule. Okay, but now I can take this and give it a common denominator by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 1 plus x, and observe what I have here is x, and then the derivative with respect to x of, let's see, that's going to be x over 1 minus x squared. Okay, nice. But now what I can do here is perhaps use the quotient rule to finish this derivative off. So we have x, and then that's going to be times what? So taking the derivative of the numerator first, we have 1 minus x squared, and it'll be minus x times the derivative of the denominator, which is minus 2x. 
And then let's see, it's gonna be over one minus x squared quantity squared. So something like that. But now let's observe by putting some stuff together, we're gonna to have this is x and then one plus x squared over one minus x squared squared. Actually, after just simplifying this. And now I noticed that right here, I'm missing a squared. Okay, cool. So we've taken care of this first equation. Now let's move on to the second. And that second one is a double sum. So we've got the sum as m goes from one to infinity of the sum as k goes from one to infinity of minus one to the k plus m, m squared minus k squared over m squared plus k squared all squared. Okay, so notice that there's quite a bit of symmetry built into this in this exponent right here of minus one and in the denominator, and a bit of asymmetry in this m squared minus k squared, and we're gonna take advantage of that. So now I'd like to observe the following. I can split this into pieces kind of naturally. I'm gonna first split it into the piece where, let's see, m is bigger than or equal to one and k is strictly bigger than m. And then, well, we're gonna have the same thing. So minus one to the k plus m and then m squared minus k squared over m squared plus k squared. And then the kind of middle case that I don't need to write down is the case where k is equal to m. And I don't need to write that down because that clearly cancels immediately. And just to like take a step back, I'm splitting this into the cases where k is bigger than m, k is less than m, and then that trivial case where k is equal to m. Okay, so for the next one, we'll have plus that sum as k is bigger than or equal to one and m is strictly bigger than k. And then we have minus one to the k plus m and then m squared minus k squared over m squared plus k squared. And then, well, there's really hardly anything left to do. I'm going to take perhaps this first sum and just re-indexing it and re-index it by swapping m and k. But let's observe that if we swap m and k, that's just going to change this k to an m, this m to a k, and then the order of this difference from m squared minus k squared to k squared minus m squared. I don't really need to swap the rest of them because those are symmetric in m and k. But now observe that if we add those two sums back together, it'll clearly cancel. I have k squared minus m squared plus m squared minus k squared. But that tells you that this whole sum is equal to zero, but that's what we wanted over here. Okay, now before we dive into our derivation of the closed form of this sum, I'd like to point out this last one, which like I said, we did in a previous video, or we did something kind of close enough. So it's the hyperbolic cosine of pi z over the hyperbolic sine squared of pi z equals one over pi squared. And then we have the sum over all integers k of minus one to the k over z plus i k all squared. Okay, so now that we've got our tools ready, let's jump into our derivation of this sum. Okay, so now jumping into our kind of final calculation, I'd like to first start by expanding the inner sum here or the inner term of the sum using a geometric series formula. But in order to do that, I wanna make sure the common ratio is less than one. And I can do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator here by e to the minus 2n plus one times pi. Okay, so that leaves us with 2n plus one times e to the minus 2n plus one times pi over one plus e to the minus 2n plus one times pi. But I'm gonna write that plus as minus a negative, just so that I can expand it as a geometric series using the formula that we wrote down before. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna give us. So that's gonna give us the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, and then the sum as m goes from one to infinity. We'll explain why there's a one there. And then we'll have a two n plus one, which comes along for the ride because of this right here. And then we'll have e to the minus two n plus one times pi times m. I'll write that as times m pi. Okay, so something like that going on there. So I need to start at n equals one, or I'm allowed to start at n equals one because I've got this numerator term right here. Okay, cool. 
So now what I'll do is the following. Oh, and I almost forgot, I have a minus one to the M minus one out front of this because of this minus sign in here. Okay, nice. Now I'm gonna factor some stuff out as well as change the order of summation. So that's gonna be the sum as M goes from one to infinity of minus one to the M minus one. And then inside of that, I have the sum as N goes from zero to infinity of two N plus one. And then E to the minus M times pi raised to the two N plus one. I wrote it like that because now we can use our formula right here. Okay. So let's see what that gives us. So we've got our sum as m goes from one up to infinity of minus one to the m minus one. And then applying our rule right here, what will we have? Well, we're gonna have e to the minus m times pi, that's like the x here. And then one plus e to the minus two m times pi, that's like from this one plus x squared term. And then in the denominator, we're gonna have one minus e to the minus two m pi all squared. So we've got something like that. But now it's not too hard to see that these terms right here should probably be related to, let's see, hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. So in fact, let's recall some formulas over here and then I'll leave it as a bit of a homework exercise for you to fill in the small details. So let's recall that the hyperbolic cosine of, perhaps we'll put a Z here, or maybe a T here, is E to the T plus E to the minus T over two. Whereas the hyperbolic sine of T is E to the T minus E to the minus T over two. Okay, so again, I'm just recalling those formulas because that's essentially the kind of picture that we have right here. Notice that it becomes really clear if we were to perhaps multiply the numerator and the denominator by e to the 2m pi. Then I think it would start to look exactly like that. But again, like I said, I'll leave it as a bit of a homework exercise for you to go from this to what I'll write down next. It's really just taking advantage of those formulas over there. So we have the sum as m goes from one to infinity, minus one to the m, and then after that we'll have a hyperbolic cosine of m pi in the numerator, and then a hyperbolic sine of m pi squared, all squared in the denominator, and then because of those halves uh, that are built into the definition of those functions, we have this one half out front. We really have like a two here because we're missing a half and a two squared here because we're missing a half, but those cancel down as such. Okay, nice. But now before we move on to the next board, I'm gonna use this formula over here and observe that I can now write that as one over two times pi squared because again of this thing right here. And then after that, we're gonna have the sum as m goes from one up to infinity and then inside of that sum, we're gonna have this sum as k goes over all integers. And then we're gonna have a minus one to the k plus m plus one. And that comes from this right here together with our, that should be an m minus one there. Notice that m minus one and m plus one will give us the same uh, value of minus one. So we can just make that simple replacement. Okay, cool. And then in the denominator, we'll have m plus i times k uh, quantity squared. Again, from this right here. Okay, so now let's bring that to the top and then finish everything off. So if you're still around and you're enjoying the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Okay, so here's where we left off. And now what we wanna do is split the sum over all integers into the case where k is equal to zero and k is not zero. So let's do that. So we're gonna have one over two times pi squared and I'll first write the k equals zero case. So that means we're just gonna have a single sum, m goes from one to infinity, and then we'll have a minus one to the m plus one over what? Over m squared. I think that's pretty clear. And then let's split it into positive k terms and negative k terms. So the first one will be k goes from 
one to infinity and then minus one to the m plus k. I'm gonna go ahead and factor the minus one out to make that m plus k there. And then in the denominator, what do we have? We have m plus i times k squared. And then I'll have minus the sum as k goes from one to infinity. You might say, well, shouldn't it go from minus infinity to minus one? Well, I'll just make the change of k with minus k to take, uh, it, take advantage of that and write it as a normal sum here. Okay, and then we'll have minus one to the m plus k because minus one to the m plus k is the same thing as minus one to the m minus k. And then here we'll have m minus i k quantity squared. And that's because, well, again, we replaced k with minus k. Okay, nice. And now this thing right here, this first sum as m goes from one to infinity of minus one to the m plus one over m squared, we've actually calculated that on the channel before. That's related to the zeta function and the Basel problem. So that's in fact equal to pi squared over 12. So that's gonna be one over two pi squared and then we'll have pi squared over 12 from that first term. And now I wanna push those sums together. So I'll have minus the sum as k goes from one to infinity, but notice I need my m here. So this should be m and k going from one to infinity. So I missed my double sum, but I'll just put that in here and then I'll rewrite it with a double sum here so we won't miss anything. Okay, so the sum as m goes from one to infinity, the sum as k goes from one to infinity. And then I'll have minus one to the m plus k. And then combining those things with a common denominator um, is just like some straightforward algebra. And that's going to give us the following. We'll have two times m squared minus k squared all over m squared plus k squared quantity squared. But I can go ahead and factor that two out front and put it there. But observe that I've just uh, ended up with exactly the double sum, which was this second formula here, which we showed to equal zero. So here, this is simply equal to zero. And in the end, we've got what? One over two pi squared times pi squared over 12, AKA one over 24. And that's a good place to stop.